So I'm really excited to show you guys this drum kit today because it's really interesting, like interesting to the point where someone like me, who knows nothing about drum kit, would make an entire video about this thing. Let's go. I can literally just pick the whole thing up. I can literally walk through the streets like this and use it as a shield. <laughs> So obviously I'm not a drum kit expert, <laughs> as you can clearly tell. And for me, again, I really enjoy the convenience aspect of being able to take just one item that has all of the drums on it, all five drums, I can literally just lift it up with two hands and go out the door. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of this studio, my name is Adam. Yes, this might feel a little bit unusual because it's the first ever drum kit related video on this channel. It is the Solo Tour drum kit from Buffalo Percussion. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Ryan Carlisle, Sam Shun Han, Greg Harris, Doms Dominic Chung, DMP Newberger, Scott Rader, Marimba Maurice, and Lucas Faber. Thank you so much for joining the Studio VIP team. And today's featured studio artist is Ethan Pluster. Thank you so much for joining the Studio Artist team. And if you'd like to become a Studio VIP or a Studio Artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash amtan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. I hope you've been well. And yes, this is the first ever drum kit video on the show. This is a really weird position to be talking from. Just like this. All right, this is um, slightly better. <laughs> so as you guys know, on this channel, I don't really talk about drums like ever. <laughs> I don't even talk about snare drum, let alone an entire drum kit. And that's because I don't really get much chance to play drum kit. I don't really play it in concerts. I don't play in a band or anything like that. But of course, being a percussionist, I still get really interested in anything to do with drums, even if I'm not that good at it because they're just so cool. And you can imagine my excitement when Buffalo Percussion, my friends from Taiwan, brought this drum kit, this very interesting design drum kit to Marimba Fest 2019 last year. And after they left, they said, they would leave this drum kit for me as a gift. So I'm really excited to show you guys this drum kit today because it's really interesting, like interesting to the point where someone like me who knows nothing about drum kit would make an entire video about this thing. Let's go. Okay, so it doesn't take a drum expert to see that this drum kit is not like any ordinary drum kit. It looks more like an electronic drum kit almost because the drums aren't real drums and it's all on this one H-shaped frame. And as you can see, contrary to the B-roll at the start of today's video, I folded down the drum kit completely flat to this shape where I can literally just pick the whole thing up. I can literally walk through the streets like this and use it as a shield. <laughs> And yeah, it's literally because you can fold this thing completely flat and lift it up like that, that makes it so special. Let's start off by talking about what you actually get in the box. So everything you see in this picture, except for the hi-hats symbols, is included in the package, including the 20-inch bass drum, the 14-inch snare drum and floor tom, the 10-inch high tom, the 12-inch low tom, the hi-hat stand, the cymbal tops, and this H-shaped aluminium alloy frame. Now, as you can imagine, given that this thing is so small and so light, it's pretty easy to set up. And for someone like me, who is not a drum kit expert, it was pretty straightforward. Starting off with the frame, so you have all of the individual tubes, all you have to do is put on all of the attachments. So on the left-hand side vertical tube, we have an attachment for the kick drum, snare drum, we have an attachment that attaches the horizontal tube, high tom, and then we have the cymbal top. And then on this side, pretty much the exact same thing, the kick drum, floor tom, horizontal tube, the low tom, and we also have another cymbal top. And so you have to put these attachments on first before putting on the feet, otherwise you won't be able to put them on. And silly me, I actually tried putting together the legs and the frame first without putting on the attachments. Obviously that doesn't work. Like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> so you'll put the attachments on and then you put the feet on and then you put the tube together and you sort of just estimate where the heights are gonna be because you're gonna adjust them later anyway. And then you put together all of the drums. So you get the kick drum and you just thread it through the little spikes, which are very similar to concert tom spikes, floor tom spikes. It's all the same. Once you have the kick drum in place, then you have something that's sort of holding it all together. Then you can put in the other drums. So I put in the snare and the floor tom, and then I put in the high tom and the low tom. 
And then you put together the remaining accessories like the kick pedal, which is actually a really nice kick pedal. I really like this black color and it has two chains instead of one. I don't know what the official term for it is, but it has tension adjustment as well on the chain to make it more or less springy. Some Velcro tape on the bottom to help it stick the carpets. And it also comes with a drum key in its own little special slot on the left hand side. Like you just literally chuck it in like this. Oh, that is... That is genius. So I actually own a 1998 Pearl Export drum kit that's off camera, but you usually see it in the background of my videos. I'm probably gonna use this kick pedal on that drum kit. And then of course there's the hi-hat stand, which is actually a very simple hi-hat stand. It's just very flat. It doesn't really have much height adjustment. Like this Pearl hi-hat stand that came with my Export is a lot more thick, like the legs are more braced and they can go a lot higher. Whereas this one is kind of limited to its own height, but that's okay. So after this point, the drum kit kind of looks like this, like what it looks like now. And all it's missing are some cymbals because drum kits don't usually come with cymbals. <laughs> now, because I have that Pearl export over there, I do have some cymbals lying around like those hi-hat tops, which are Z Customs, Zildjian Z Customs, very, very old. They sound kind of ratty, to be honest. And for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to be using the Pi C 2002 18 inch crash, which has been cut at the bottom and it's not in very good condition, but it works. And I'm also going to be using this 20 inch Zildjian Amiya ride, which as you can see is very, very oxidized. <laughs> it could be in a lot better shape, but it's not. I've heard a lot of people say that the Amiya ride sounds terrible and I have to agree with them. It sounds pretty awful. So I'm going to put the drum kit back into its normal position from this flat position. Ready, set, go. Okay, so did I also mention that this drum kit actually comes with a free pair of sticks? <laughs> so anyway, this is what it looks like when it's fully set up and... Okay, I, I really am not very good at playing this. <laughs> okay, so things I really like about this drum kit, of course, the first thing is the size. Like, it's so compact. The fact that the kick drum doesn't jut out means that you save a lot of space in the front. So if your stage is really tight or if you're in like an orchestral pit or a musical or something where you have very limited space, this might be a really good option. Of course, there's the fact that it folds down completely. That's really nice. And I also like that because there is no stand hardware, so there's no like legs in the back of the drum kit, it means my legs actually have a lot of free space here. There's so much space here. So you could actually have more space for things like mics. If you want to mic the kick drum, if you want to mic the bottom of the tom, stuff like that that would be really easy. Other things I really like, the design, I really like the speckled finish of the black and white. It's a very industrial, almost marble-like appearance. Very, very cool. I do think that these aluminum tubes for the frame need to be a different color though. It doesn't suit anything else that's on this instrument because all the drum hardware, like the lugs and the cymbal stands are all nice and polished. And then you have this really matte alloy finish that just doesn't look like anything. It looks like an old bicycle. I think if they made the entire frame black, it would give the illusion of floating drums. I think that would be really, really cool. And it would just match a little bit better with this awesome speckled finish. Cause right now it just sticks out like a sore thumb that to have this silver finish. But that's just my opinion. I also really like that all of the heads are Remo branded drum heads, like official, genuine, made in Taiwan Remos. And I don't really know that much about drum heads, but I do like the feeling of the snare drum and the kick drum head. Tom heads, I don't really like this plastic head, especially when the toms are single headed because they don't have anything underneath. It's just an empty hole. I do like the fit and finish of all of the components though, like the hoops, that polish finish is just gorgeous. I really like the frames joining parts, like all of these knobs feel nice and solid, which reminds me actually, because with the exception of a couple of these drum key lugs, which most drummers have drum keys, the rest of it is all knobs. Okay, so now for the bad news. The things that I don't like about this drum kit, well, firstly, it's got to be the sound, like. It's fine because of the design of these drums, because they are only single headed and because the shells are so shallow, you're not gonna get as much depth and as much punch to the sound, especially the kick, like. I feel myself wanting more of that really low punchy frequency. Maybe if you switch the heads, you might get some more depth to the sound, but of course, again, you're limited by the design. So that is one of the first things you have to consider for this drum kit. If you're getting it, you have to be prepared to compromise slightly on the sound. Which brings me to point number two of what I think can be improved with this drum kit is the price. 
So Buffalo makes two versions of this lightweight frame drum kit. One mm -hmm. of them is this one, which is called the Solo Tour. And they also make one called the Solo Light, which is a little bit smaller. So the light version of this drum kit, the smaller one, comes in at about 22,000 Taiwanese dollars, which is about 1,000 Australian dollars, which is about 700 US dollars, which is not that cheap already. And if you go up to this tour version, it's actually around 26,000 Taiwanese dollars, which is about 1,300 Australian dollars, which is about 900 US dollars, 800 to 900 US dollars, which is really not cheap. Now bear in mind, when you're talking about drum kits, the 700 to 800 US dollar mark is like the entry point for drum kits. It's where you get things like the Pearl Export, you get the uh, Yamaha entry level stuff, Fresh Catalina, like this is not considered expensive by drum kit standards. So that means you wouldn't buy this drum kit as like a good value alternative. Like it's definitely not cheap. It's definitely not designed for students or anyone that's on a budget. It's designed for people who want convenience above everything else. And for me, again, I really enjoy the convenience aspect of being able to take just one item that has all of the drums on it, all five drums, I can literally just lift it up with two hands and go out the door. That is really, really a game changer compared to if you have a five piece drum kit and you need to lift every single thing one by one. You know, time is money, as they say. <laughs> anyway, enough about the practicality aspects, but before we move on to the sound test, if you're enjoying today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it so much. Yes, I know it's a drum kit video, but I hope you're enjoying it nonetheless. <laughs>
Okay, so obviously I'm not a drum kit expert, <laughs> as you can clearly tell. So I hope it sounded okay, but let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Buffalo Percussion Solo Tour Drum Kit. Do you think it's a good design? Do you think it's very useful? Would you buy one yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. If you really value convenience and you're willing to try something different, this is actually a very good alternative. There's a lot of things you can do with this setup. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be just the traditional drum kit stuff. Like I could see a lot of people using this as a rack tom setup. Can you imagine playing something like Ribbon A, Ribbon B on something like this, but a bigger version with all the drums attached to it. And then when you finish the gig, you literally stand up, pick up the entire drum kit and walk away. <laughs> that would be the greatest flex of all time. But yes, if you'd like to check out any of these drum kits or anything else from Buffalo Percussion, you can check them out in the description below. And no, I'm not getting any commission from this video. It's not sponsored at all. I just think this is a really cool piece of kit. Thank you so much to Buffalo Percussion for giving me this. Once again, I'm gonna take really good care of this drum kit. I really enjoy having it in the studio. It's really cool. And thank you so much to all of you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, once again, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it so much. And please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. Yes, although I'm not a drum kit player, I do upload a lot of percussion stuff on this channel every single week. So if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below and hit that notification bell to be informed whenever I upload something new. Finally, of course, I'm going to do another promo for Marimba Fest. Marimba Fest early bird sales finished on 1st of March. 2020, which is not very long now. So if you want to check out Marimba Fest, which is a Marimba Festival happening here in Perth, Western Australia for six days. It's one of the biggest Marimba Festivals in the world right now. You can check it out at marimbafest.com. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.